Hello everybody, today we will be going over a quadratic function problem at the IB math studies level. Now, I wanted to go over this problem in particular because I feel like it's relatively hard. Um, it's definitely harder than most quadratic functions out there and it also goes through almost all of the things you have to know about a quadratic function. And so, this is a scary one because we have the graph of a quadratic function which has the y-intercept of 10 and one of its, one of its intercepts is where x is 1 and the x-coordinate of the vertex of the graph is 3. And we also have the equation of the quadratic function is in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And we need to find the value of c. Now, first things first, we have to identify what this problem is giving us. Okay, if they give us that the y-intercept is 10, that means that my point for the y-intercept is going to be 0, comma, 10. The other, th the other thing is no. The other thing that we know is that one of its x-intercepts is 1. That means that when my x is 1, we have an intercept. Okay? And we know that the x coordinate of the vertex of the graph of the graph is three. And so if I go ahead and draw this, this is what I end up with. I know that the vertex is going to be at three. The problem is I don't know if it is facing up or it is facing down. What I mean by this is that I don't know if the graph is like that or if the graph is like this. Okay, however, if I put in all my information in the graph, I will have the y-intercept, right? And I know that the y-intercept is way, way up here. And so I know that it has to be the second version. It has to be the version where the quadratic function is facing upwards, okay? And so, that in mind, I redraw my graph just to leave it, leave it a little bit nicer. It has to be something like this. I will have my y-intercept here at 0, 10. And I will have my 1, 0 x-intercept right over here, okay? The other thing that we know is that quadratic functions are perfectly symmetrical. That is also why this line here, which goes through the vertex, is actually the axis of symmetry. It is cut perfectly in half. It's it's kind of like the human face. If you, if you draw a line right through your nose, it is parallel, right? You have one eye on each side, two nostrils, etc. And so, if one of my x-intercepts is two points away from the vertex, that means my other x-intercept is also going to be two points away, right? And so this point here has to be 3 plus 2, comma 0, okay? And that point is going to be 5, comma 0. And if you still don't believe me, imagine doing 3 minus 2, comma 0, okay? This should give me the other x-intercept, and that gives me the point 1, comma 0, which is the pro what the problem gave me right here. Okay, so what I just did is that I worked with the value, I mean, with the fact that quadratic functions are symmetrical. Okay, so right now I'm just spitting out information. I haven't gotten into the problem yet. I'm just saying what we know about the problem. The other thing that we know is that A has to be positive because the quadratic function is facing upwards. Okay, that is all that I know up until now. And so for part A, we need to write down the value of C. Now, the value of C in a quadratic function, which is right here, is always going to be the y-intercept, okay? And so I'm just going to go ahead and write that c equals 10. The proof behind this is that if I plug in 0 for x right here, and I have a times 0 squared plus b times 0 plus c, you're going to notice that y equals c, okay? Any time that you plug in 0 for x, you're going to end up with your y-intercept. And the vice versa is that if any time you plug in 0 for y, you're going to have your x-intercept, okay? And so here I'm using this property, and it is proven that y is equal to c, I mean the y-intercept is equal to c always. And so since they gave us the y-intercept, I just went ahead and put c equals 10, okay? Now for part b, which is the much harder part, we're going to find the values of a and b. And I feel like the easiest way to do this is using the axis of symmetry formula. So we know that the axis of symmetry, which is in the formula booklet actually, tells us where in the quadratic formula um, does it cut down right through the middle. And we know that it cuts down right through the middle in the vertex. And they tell us that the vertex is where the x coordinate of the graph is 3. That is where, what they give us in the beginning of the problem. And so I know that my axis of symmetry has to be equal to 3. And that the formula for axis of symmetry is negative b over 2a, okay? And, and if I work this out a little bit, I end up with 6a 
being equal to negative b, which is the same as saying that a is equal to negative b over 6, okay? However, this is not enough, okay? Because I still have two variables in the formula. I still have a and b, right? And so using this form here and any of the points that I have, whether it's this one or this one or one of these, I can find a way to solve it, right? And so let's say that I plug in the point 1, 0, right? Then I plug in the, one, the point 1, 0. I'm going to have 0 for y. I'm going to have a times 1 squared plus b times 1 plus c. And we know that c is 10, so I'm going to go ahead and put 10 right here. I also know that a is the same as negative b over 6, and so I'm going to plug that in as well. And so here I end up with negative b over 6 plus b plus 10. Okay, and so I want to leave b by itself. And so I'm going to put the, the 10 on the other side. I'm going to have negative 10 is equal to negative b over 6 plus b. Now, because I don't like fractions, I'd rather just get rid of them immediately. So I'm just going to multiply everything by 6. And this way, this 6 right here gets eliminated. So on the left side, I end up with negative 60 is equal to negative b plus 6b. Okay? And so negative 60 is equal to 5b. And we end up with b being equal to... And now we plug this back into the axis of symmetry formula, which we had earlier, which was that a is equal to negative b over 6. And so if I plug in negative 12 right here, I end up with a being e equal to negative times negative 12 divided by 6. And this, this gives me that a is equal to 2. Okay, And so that is how you do part b. The most important part is that you want to try to end up with two formulas. And the reason you want to end up with two formulas is because here we have two variables. Okay? And so that is how you do part B. Now, for part C, we're going to write down the second x-intercept of the function, which we actually already did earlier by using the axis of symmetry kind of like rule, which would be 5, 0. Now, however, I think it's worth it to show one more way to solve it. And the way to solve it would be to plug in everything we know into the quadratic function formula, right? And so we have the value for a, we have the value for b, we have the value for c. And we know that our function has to be y equals a, which is 2 times x squared, minus 12, which is our b, x, plus c, which is our 10, right? We all got this from before. And working from this, we can use the zero formula or um, just factor it, okay? Those are two ways that you can solve part C. I'd rather not show it because in my other videos I show how to factor and I show how to use the, the zero formula which makes reference to this guy right here. And in this video I showed how to use the axis of symmetry. Uh, I showed how to use the axis of symmetry method. So if you want to find the other methods um, you can go ahead and look at my videos, okay? But that because I don't want to make this video too long. So that is how you solve this problem. I hope it helped. Peace.